friends. Okay. Hello, everyone out there. Today, I, I, um, I have a very special guest, and I'm really honored to um, welcome him and to uh, also to perform with him. And uh, he's, um, I would say, he's a master of great fat Russian sound. And uh, you probably think it's uh, some Russian. Um, musician, <laughs> but it's not. It's not a Russian guy. It's a. It's a. F it's the famous, the one and only. Danny or Daniel Müller shot. There he is. Here we are. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice and to uh, see you. yeah, and <laughs> thanks for um, again. Thanks for your time and uh, to be pleasure. here to to do this interview. And um, well. This interview, the name of it is the Honest Street Interview, and the first question, as usual, is uh, head or heart? Oh, always heart, I would say, always heart, because the head, the heart actually is leading the rest of it, which includes the head as well. So heart comes first and head comes second. Perfect. Short and good. This is exactly how I think as well, so mm. there is a connection. I'm so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, another thing is... Um, which I, I have on mind, like uh, I, I also like to ask is if there is, um, because uh, let's not talk about classical music or classical uh, celebrities and um, famous uh, people, but um, if there is one celebrity or a person dead already, but you wish to get back that person into life and to meet up with that uh, person, mm -hmm. who would it be? Well, we were talking about yesterday's program, which was so exciting. We played a wonderful Russian program with works by Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff. And to bring back those personalities, I mean, can you imagine having a face-to-face -face conversation with Peter Tchaikovsky uh, here? Yes, yeah. Oh, and oh God, I would, yeah. of course, the first thing I would ask him, since I played yesterday the Rocco Corporations, why not start a bigger piece, something like the Violin Concerto, something, you know, epic, something grand for, 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 uh, for uh, cello, cello and orchestra. And he actually started, there's a, a manuscript of him, so he wanted to write it, but as we all know, he only became 53 years old, so he didn't have enough time, unfortunately. So this would be fascinating to sit with him, bring him back and ask him for a cello concerto. That's so true. But <laughs> same time, I thought right now, like, imagine Mozart, mm, of 58, I think it would be wow. too much. It would be too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would crack on the floor. Going on a tour <laughs> with all the symphonies by Mozart. Oh, oh my wow. God, it's going to be oh, wow. two years. Yes. But uh, back to the question. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now we got the musician. Mm -hmm. But we also talked about personalities. queens, personalities, yes. not connected to any classical business. Yes. Yeah. Who would it be? Of course, there are wonderful um, people in history that you can think of, philosophers, writers, um, something connected with art, I would say. And I would Just give me one name. I would ask Eduard Munch, for example, oh, the yes. great painter, and, or Van Gogh, um, just to have a conversation. And, and Munch is interesting because it's, like, it's really amazing, uh, his creativity and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would just love to ask him? Well, I'm always interested, you know, in inner messages. Okay. What is your drive? What is your purpose? What is your idea behind? And this connects us all. I mean, we are, I mean, there are so many wonderful things we have to, we all experience, which is, of course, life at first, because we live. That's uh, fantastic. And what do we make out of this? Yeah. Out of our time, the few decades that we have. The little time. The little time, yes. Yeah, because life is really brief. It's a brief moment in overall in history and uh, evolution and yeah. you know, how you want to call it. So this is what I'm interested in. I oh. just ask people about their inner ideas and, and what, what they want to bring to all of us. Yeah, what's the basically. purpose and so on yeah. and so on. Okay. Um, another question uh, different to this is um, do you have brother sisters I, I just couldn't yeah forget. I do I have an older brother you have an older brother yes. what is he doing he actually also started with different kinds of instruments and uh, but he 
his clear idea was not to become a musician because he really <laughs> he really hated I don't to want to get into this business <laughs> definitely not yeah, it's everyone's choice he didn't really like to you know go out on stage and play in front oh, yeah. of people okay. which is of course for for everyone it's something to conquer and to reflect on um, but he was very much interested in law so he studied law oh, okay. and now he became a lawyer and uh, in New York, Man City? Uh, no, 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 in Munich. Okay, <laughs> in my no, but, but it's, it's kind of, it's <laughs> yes, kind of pretty kind good. Of the same. <laughs> yes, just a bit smaller. Um, so he's um, doing his work there, he's traveling and he's luckily also enjoying culture and music and going to concerts and sometimes to my concerts. So, <laughs> was he enjoying, like, did he also enjoy your practicing at home? Oh, I'm afraid he didn't. <laughs> But I also had to, you know, um, experience his practicing on the trumpet at the oh time my God. because he was playing the trumpet. So that was very loud. Okay, and well, so the cello was a bit softer. He was definitely the winner in this. He was the winner, this. yeah. The house <laughs> was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, there was. Almost, I don't know. I don't know if is there anything existing chamber music-wise for trumpet and cello. No, I mean, this is no, so actually, not working. No, it's not working together. And there we actually looked for it. There's not one piece we found. So something <laughs> has to be maybe rented for the composers out there. Yeah, Please trumpet write and cello. Something, yes, yeah. and then I play with my brother. And in this in this case, it suited really good because trumpet doesn't suit with cello. So and his business is so different to yours business. Yes. And so still, there is like then there's an interesting question. Was there anything you always kind of had nice fights mm. like for you know like he got the bigger ice cream than <laughs> me or something to <laughs> well as in all families you know you fight for everything <laughs> yeah with your brother especially and food is something that is of course always okay a big issue so who gets more who gets less but uh, I guess over the years you have to overcome these things and uh, just well, you know, make, a, make a compromise I yeah. don't know I, I time think... helps <laughs> so, sometimes I do have these moments, you know, like you go out with people mm -hmm. where with the only one person and you go to a restaurant and you have these moments where you order something and then it comes to that moment where you realize that the thing you ordered is not that good and the thing, not a good thing. <laughs> on the other <laughs> side and you're like... <laughs> But isn't that a general problem to yes. think about the neighbor always has something that you would have liked or something? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, this is uh, also, um, yeah, speaking about food, I'm actually also, because we are traveling, obviously we travel a lot, so we have to order in restaurants. And so we have to know what, especially on concert days, what to eat, what, you know, brings, brings some energy for mm -hmm. the concert. And so to maintain your um, your food, Yeah, physics in yeah. a way. That's a that's a crucial thing, and I'm I'm actually I find that very exciting. Also, you know, connected with the traveling part. Okay. That you learn by experience what to do and what not to do. So. But there are there popped up two other questions. They are also mm -hmm. on my list here, which yeah. is not that. And uh, one thing is: is there a favorite dish? I mean, I kind of hope something that you say, but I, <laughs> I, I leave it up to you. Like, is there a favorite dish? Yeah. which you really could eat always because you love it like I mean, well i love asian food for example asian food. yeah because i think they they also they managed uh, and uh, in experience and they found a certain way to really you know bring everything into balance yeah so i love asian food and i'm actually more and more uh, finding myself to be a vegetarian okay. in many ways and i i feel if i if i eat Lots of you know fruit and vegetables. The body likes it the most, and I can somehow function the best. You cook yourself? Uh, sometimes, but yeah. my wife is so much better, so <laughs> she's cooking. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but but I mean, I mean, um, am I allowed to say like uh, as a as a French mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, woman? Yes, French it's, cuisine. It's it's an amazing kitchen. I mean, yeah, a, yeah. But I what I hope actually that you say because. Uh, He's playing uh, all the Russian uh, composers with such a great sound, such a passion. I mean, that's why I, I kind of. What about the Russian kitchen? <laughs> yes. What about the meat, the borscht soup? What the meat, the yeah, heavy. You want the heavy stuff? No. Sometimes you really. I think it's very good actually to dive into that. Uh, also, German food, of course, as you know, it's very substantial, very heavy, but. Yeah. 
Um, it's all, I think the question in all fields is about balance. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need that and sometimes you need this. Um, but overall, for me, I experienced that. It needs to be healthy. Yeah, it needs to be healthy. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was, when I was uh, younger than today, so kind of two years ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. No, but it was like super, uh, I mean, it didn't matter what I eat. Mm. I just went to the exactly. stage, all cool. Yeah, yes. But today I can't realize how can you play a great, good feeling concerto mm. with a heavy belly oh, full of uh, mante or pilmini or yeah, something yeah, like no, this. It's, you know, like, it's impossible. Yeah. And um, um, the other thing which popped up is like mm. if if you uh, like go back the moment where you started uh, the cello where you felt the <coughs> decision to to be, become a cellist and um, if it was not the cello and something completely different uh, not connected to mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. is there something you would love to be if you had like a second uh, a second life and you have just a choice well yeah it's a big question because i always i found myself you know the most inspired with something connected with art okay. with culture with uh, so what about painting yes I was actually painting a lot when I was a teenager and I still do I actually and in the corona times because we were speaking about this I was also sitting down and you know doing drawings and uh, just um, experiencing that side um, because as a teenager I did lots of you know these huge graffiti yeah. paintings do you have still any? yes I do yeah. do you have a collection? Uh, I have lots of photos from the past and uh, of course my sketchbooks and all these things and then the second thing you know next to art was um, actually film and movies ah, and okay. I, I was always fascinated you know when I, I grew up in the, the 80s and these were the times when you know these uh, VHS cameras, the video oh, yeah, cameras yeah, yeah. came out. The huge ones. The huge <laughs> ones. It's like the first <laughs> phones where you have to hold it like this. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and I was just fascinated by it. I loved it. I I had to buy one with a couple of friends, yeah. and I did some scripts. I made some you know this kind of Krimi uh, little stories about uh, someone who murdered someone. And what then, age? Were, were Were I was maybe 10, 11, 12, Amazing. something like this. So you had kind of yes. a couple of friends? Yes. Oh, and there, is, there is this movie, oh, I think the movie name is movie mm -hmm. 30, I don't know, 2, 35, I don't know. Like yes. it's, it, okay. it's about four boys, okay. they kind of love to do movies. And yeah, accidentally, <laughs> accidentally they, they filmed uh -huh. while filming uh -huh. a strange thing happening. It has okay. to do a bit with... Uh, Aliens with the science fiction or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to see it's super funny. But yeah. okay, so you would so in probably become a, a yeah. producer or yeah, something like this. I yeah. was really fascinated and and just uh, yeah, totally moved by the the, the, the possibilities that today that there are. Did you yes. see Avatar? Yes, of course. It's amazing. Yeah, isn't it? but incredible. I find it kind of a bit destroying when you know and you see mm. the making of mm. because you see them yeah, that I didn't see so it's good oh it's pretty <laughs> always the screen yeah. screen and yeah. they have a yeah, lot of things connected to the body yes and you see them moving yeah they have to pretend that they are in the scene it's but so hard it's I mean, hard for the actors yeah. it's like sitting mm. for you how, how would it be without the cello and just pretending exactly something. Yeah, just yeah, pretending and there is hard. no one yeah, yeah. and yeah. just 50 cameras on you. Tough. Yeah, really. And then it would be an avatar playing the cello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that would sound. But yeah. So that means also, yeah. and why don't you have, I mean, if you do have a lot of arts, you mm. did yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Don't you want to open up a little gallery somewhere? I mean, I would love to see it. Yeah, that's fascinating. You okay. should. Yeah, something. Definitely, because yeah. you are so into art. And uh, I, I I lost a lot Maybe of things. Someday. Yeah, my my grandfather he was an artist. He mm -hmm. made sculptures and mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. So I also paint. Yeah. Uh, until today, mm -hmm. and uh, the last thing I did was a huge. It's not not a painting. It's uh, the Beethoven, the uh, famous, most famous. Uh, the Warhol painting? No, uh, no the, like this this old uh, painting old. of Beethoven. Okay. You know, like with the open the hair. Exactly. Yes. Okay. But I did it made out of beer. Cups, right? Okay. So, amazing. art is amazing. So, yeah, yeah. I, so if you open up a gallery one day, just please tell me. I would love I to will. see it. I it's will. so interesting. <laughs> And uh, movie-wise, like, are you a fan of Netflix? 
no, actually, I'm probably one of the last ones who hasn't actually started even. Okay. I'm still Don't watching the old, the old stuff, okay. the old movies. Netflix is dangerous. It's like I'm sure uh, it's a drug. It is. It's the new drug. I think I, drug, I read yeah. it somewhere. The, so the big red ash. I'm not in it. I'm not. In okay. It. Um, and um, another thing, I have. Uh, how do you like? Do you have a, a everyday ritual, or uh, how do you charge your batteries? I mean, you are super fit. I mean, if you play, it's mm. great performing. Like mm. you have a lot of energy. So where do you get them? Where do you? One thing we said already is food and maintenance of uh, well-being. The other is movement. Okay. You have to move. I think life is about movement and music is about movement. So you have to yeah, just um, be fit with whatever you do. And uh, so I, I do sports, I run, yeah. I um, yeah, I just try to stay in shape. Do you also run moving. with this kind of weather? Um, well, in this kind of way, <laughs> I think I'd rather stay inside. So, <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, okay, um, you can do workouts. But and... yeah, but there are also, you know, like exercises, also stretching, these things. Okay. And, and that's, yeah, just keeping me, me fit. And then it's also enjoyable to be on the instrument and uh, having the feeling that um, you can actually, yeah, express yourself more. And freely. you have all the, uh, the power and the energy to yeah. do it. Yeah. Cool. So, what? That's great. And um, uh, another thing is, um, what, what, ah, there it is. Is there is there something uh, you really hate? Mm -hmm. um, what I mean is because I don't I, I don't want you to, to blame yourself or something. Of course not. No, but I, what I mean is like you know this one one example for, of mine is if I kind of not really awake or something. I need to move early mm -hmm. with a car in a big city and the traffic, mm -hmm. it makes me super, like I really hate it. Mm -hmm. And then it takes only two seconds if someone is doing something mm -hmm. I, I dislike, I'm mm -hmm. really like, wow. Okay. You know, like this little thing, yeah, is there something you really just... Um, I'm just too, you know, curious about anything in life. Okay. That uh, and I try to always see also some things from a distance mm -hmm. that I'm not on the edge of it. That you know things that go wrong because there are always things which are going wrong in mm -hmm. life don't somehow bring me over the edge. Okay. So and and this is is almost uh, like my inner mantra to so you always. Really Yes, to, to just yeah, a little bit. Okay. And this is also, you know, when you travel so much. Also, I was last year, I traveled two times to Australia. So you have this huge jet lag and you have to function. You have to get off the airplane and you have to go straight into rehearsal and you are tired. And so how to, in these situations, to keep calm, but also focused, focused and energized. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is what I, I'm, yeah really training myself not to freak out so that means to like stay in, to stay always in a, uh, in, a, in a happy mood yes it's a bit and like we act can actually choose in a way you know always. because and and time some some sometimes really helps because you get you get distracted by something that happens whatever goes wrong in life mm. and only if you take a second and breathe breathe go a step back and then you will react differently so It's actually not too difficult. And by the way, the step back is important because mm -hmm. also in martial arts, mm -hmm. you need to get a bit a step back okay, that's, that's to, nice. to have a bit of distance mm -hmm. if you want to make a movement mm -hmm. forward again. Okay. And then the movement forward is probably more conscious and maybe and then you more punch effective. in the face, exactly. of course. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> this one works better if you go with that back and forth. Okay, so. <laughs> no, but I, I <laughs> super understand, like, this is exactly what I think. And mm -hmm. a good example is like you stand in the queue wherever, yeah. and there are always sometimes people accidentally they kind of are mm -hmm. suddenly in front of you. Yeah. And you have the choice. Happens all the time. Yeah. Yes. You have the choice. You got pissed, or yeah. you just say, This is an option, I an opportunity yeah. to somehow to reflect on life or... It's a training. Yeah. It's a training. It's a good training. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, this is a good message to all of you out there. Regard everything, what happens in your life, if it annoys you... As an opportunity. A, it's a training. It's a workout yes, session a workout. For, your, oh, yeah. <laughs> for your brain. 
I can <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> and uh, um, one of the, the last ones now is, um, is there um, a specific moment, um, something like you've been on a Mount Everest or a 2,000 meter under the water if you dive, I don't know. Um, I wish. <laughs> well, this is something you would love yes. to do. Oh, no, yeah, I would love to. Is there any moment yeah. you love to remember? Um, could be also maybe your yeah. kids, whatever, where you yes. love to think about it, which gives you always this feeling inside of, of 100%. Well, actually, you mentioned it just on a side note. The kids. I, I mean, isn't the, the greatest, the greatest and most impactful moment in life when your child is born? That's I mean, true. That's, that's a moment that is so deeply moving mm -hmm. and brings you to the enormous impact that life can have. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, nothing better than that, nothing more powerful in a way. So I'm thinking of these, these moments these and moments this, this is amazing. And of course, uh, then when you mention nature, um, I mean, music in a way is also a reflection of, of the people who experienced it. This is also something that I want to experience and which is really wonderful to combine with what we do, yeah. being musicians, to go out and to somehow experience the world. Yeah. So, so and, and many, yeah, many things. This is also how I experience it. Uh, it. High up or down, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, the, the kids is like higher than the mountain and deeper than it the is. ocean. Like yes, uh, this is the kind is. of feeling you have. Yeah. Okay, wow. It's, so, um, But in future, if there's one thing you would love to do, as I understood right, you would love to dive pretty Yes, deep. I, I, yeah. I would be fascinated yeah, to explore uh, the oceans down there to go. It's interesting because now, right now, mm -hmm. I realize that there is actually almost no, no, I don't know any composer yes. who wrote music about the landscape under the water, no. deep sea, because like Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky, yes. Mozart, whomever they all yeah, wrote yeah. music about, or Mendelssohn a lot, Always up. either the countries, yes, the landscape, exactly. but never the ocean. So maybe that's something new to explore. We have to... To all the composers out to there, all the composers, please. So explore the, the underwater and write something Dolphins, about. sharks, crabs, uh, corals, whatever. Yes. There's yes. a lot. Yeah. And um, the last question is, um, which is very important to all the coming up musicians and composers, artists, whomever there, um, what would be your good advice to all of them uh, how to become a better or a good musician? Well, that brings us back to your first question. <laughs> Listen to your heart. I think that is... Listen to your heart. Yes. Yeah, just also for contemporary music, I think really um, it's about connecting with people, reaching their emotional world, their, their thoughts, their um, inspiration and... Uh, and how to do that, yeah. that's the, the basic question. And of course cello, my instrument, is something that is of course connected to the human voice, it's very balanced, it's very, it has a lot um, of, you know, s these singing qualities. Yeah. And to have that, even in the music of our time, is something in contrast to, of course, the difficulties out there in the world, but to maintain this kind of quality is something that I would wish for. Yeah. So. Listen to your heart. It's super important. This is also my and mind. Yeah. But this is the starting point. Yeah. Because we yeah. have figured it out. Yeah. And um, so. it's stay honest also to this and, and never give up on listening to this. And mm. I think this is the message. That's our message for today. Thanks so much. Thank uh, you, it's David. It's a big it's pleasure. Great. It's my pleasure. I feel honored to perform with you and I hope to ah, it was see you joy. soon again uh, wherever. Yes. Yes. We and, will continue. Um, And for now, see you tomorrow in the concert again. Yes. Okay. See you. Bye bye to everyone. Bye.